positive fiberglass, carbon yeah. fiber, Kevlar, that's all out. Um, the point of the competition is to make a plane that flies, it's uh, an RC plane, and we have to carry weight. So it has to um, carry, well, we have to determine how much weight we can carry, and then we, can, we have to try to meet that expectation. Um, some other rules that there are is that we have a dimensions restriction, so it can't be more than like, 225 inches overall, so high width and length. Um, it has to take off within a certain distance, I think it's 100 feet, 200? 200 feet. 200 feet, and then it has to land within a 400 feet and stay on the ground. Yeah, anything breaks, falls off in flight, flight's disqualified. If you go slightly past the line, disqualified. If you are bouncing when you get across the 400 foot mark, disqualified. There's lots of ways they can knock you off of that. Oh, if you go off into the grass before the 400 foot line, disqualified. There's lots and lots of ways they can <coughs> knock you down for it. Um, and then they start coming up with, we needed to come up with a prediction as to how much we think it lifts, and then they score us based upon how accurate our prediction is. So we have a nice curve that basically says, okay, at this altitude, will lift this much. And so as they go throughout the day, they'll check how dense the air is, compare that to what the actual altitude that would represent is, and give us a score that way. So let me grab this. And then there. That's two there. There we go. We'll simplify a lot of this, because a lot of this is going to be stuff that the people from like Boeing or the judging panel in general want us to elaborate on. So we'll try and simplify as much as possible. Um, basic thing that anybody would want is uh, maximize performance and stability. And that's actually that yellow, uh, yellow and blue plane that's there was the plane we brought here in 2010 for our first year competition. Uh, that one resulted in a best crash award. <laughs> That's what happens when a wing folds at 200 feet. I don't think we have any pictures in here for evidence. No. <laughs> Come on, it makes for a good presentation. Um, we don't actually have a picture of last year's plane on there, but that one ended up lifting 21 pounds in Fort Worth, Texas last year. Uh, brought us 10th behind some names that you may recognize, uh, the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Uh, I'm trying to figure out who else was at top. Oklahoma State is up there, Lucerno. So it's not like this is just a small competition. There's 65 teams that are scheduled to go through te uh, technical presentations today. It's also an international uh, competition, so we have people coming in from like India and yeah. in the regular Hold on. class. Or, hmm? Like in the regular class? Uh, it's in general. But the regular class is the largest of them. I think there's about 40 teams entered for regular class. Which schools have like dominated? Uh, there's a few schools that generally rotate off. Uh, Cole Polytechnic Montreal does very well every year. Uh, last year they didn't do so well because they crashed on Friday night before the competition in a test flight. <coughs> so they spent their entire Saturday rebuilding the plane and then summarily crashed Sunday morning again. But they're usually a regular powerhouse school. Um, University of uh, Akron is usually pretty good. Lentreno is usually pretty good. And then there's some other teams that tend to rotate in there as to how strong they are. Is like MIT MIT doesn't actually compete in the competition. You occasionally have Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. I think Cal Poly Pimoto is going to be out there this time. Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to run down the list. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember all of them is a little difficult because there's some weird ones that are like Technical Institute of Jamshedpur from India. <laughs> and it makes it difficult to remember all of them. But it's a fun competition. You get to meet lots of people from different countries. A uh, very excitable team from Toronto. Uh, I don't remember what the school is, but the team is Asina. There's a German group that comes out. There's the Polish Air Force Academy that comes out. Um, I'm trying to remember if we have any, we don't have any Brazilian teams this year, do we? I don't think so. Last year we had a few Brazilian teams with us in uh, Fort Worth. 
it's just it's a huge deal. So there's teams from everywhere. And it's just kind of fun to sit here, poke fun at each other, figure out, hey, why the hell did you do that? <laughs> but uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Kansas State's actually also another big school there. Mm -hmm. They do well. I think they won in 2010. So they do well. And all of your expenses are paid for this, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're a little trouble. Uh, there's issues this year with that. <laughs> so part of what we have to come up with is justification for why we picked our design, which is rather unusual in this competition. Unlike just being a standard biplane or a monoplane or something like that, we've actually have our planes at two different ends of the aircraft for civility purposes. And we have to basically justify to a bunch of engineers, well, this is why our idea is better. So, what better way to do that than with a completely subjective graph? <laughs> so, we came up with this explanation here as to why we picked our canceling design. A lot of this is basically experience. So, really it's something you run into, you run into with civil or mechanical or really any degree is if you make a decision, you need to justify why you've made that decision. It could be a local arts course, it could be anything. You just need to explain why is it that your idea is best. Um, and I just had my model there of actually one of these yeah. wings. Um, last year we ended up with wings that were two pounds a piece. Four wings adds up fairly rapidly, so eight pounds of wings stuck to a plane, so it ended up with a 14 pound empty weight compared to a lot of the other teams, which were 10 pounds. So, lost quite a bit of payload capacity there, uh, but it actually flew pretty well in really windy conditions. I think it was like 30 miles per hour down the runway last year. Um, there you go, some nice looking stuff there. It's. This is kind of just representations of calculations that we end up doing. Makes it a little bit easier to portray that rather than just say, here's a table of data, figure it out. We have a lot of really cool programs that we can use that we can simulate things, and I'm like for the planes, so we just put you know, like this, our models in there and say, you know, show us what's going to happen if this, you know. Yeah. Uh, where is the competition? That you guys it is just down the road here, actually. Do you know where the Apollo 11 airfield is? Uh, yeah. yeah. At Woodley and Burbank. Yeah. It's by the Woodley Park, right? Right, that'd be correct. It's going to be the Saturday and Sunday we'll be out there flying, depending on how heavy the rain gets. Uh, yeah. That's where we go a little bit more into explaining why we like our idea. As I mentioned, it was heavy winds last year, and we were actually one of the most stable aircraft in the wind. A lot of other planes were just kind of taking off and then being pushed straight nose down into the ground. Made some for some rather spectacular crashes. <laughs> like there was one team that had, I think a wing, a wing pretty much almost literally explode on them over a bunch of trees. Yeah, it was crazy. You just hear bang, and, and like <laughs> one wing kind of floating down, and a plane stuck in a, a tree by a lake. And there was that one plane where the wings just folded yep. on each other and, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you guys build the thing, like, you anticipate for rain and Because, like, you have competition in Los Angeles, you wouldn't really expect it to be important. Yeah, there's actually covering that goes onto these wings. They don't just go bare like that. So that will cover up a lot of the exposed wood to it. And we basically just have to make an estimation. We can't, in our calculations, accommodate for rain. So we just need to make a prediction of, okay, well, we can't go for max payload, we maybe can go for like 70% of what we can do. So that makes it the main difficulty and adds some other challenges to it, like changes in density of the air. And whatnot. <coughs> uh, this one I won't get into because that's all stuff that shows nice little movements on grass that really takes far too long to explain, I think. All you need to know is, you know what coefficient of lift is? Yeah. Okay, that, these slats that we're talking about increase that by 
It was like 0 0.5 to 0.6. Nice. So. Um, basically, our justification for the airfoil. The real justification for it is everybody else uses it, so we kind of have to use it. What, what airfoil? What's that? Shape of your wing. Oh. Which you're not going to see anything like that on your airliner that you take a ride on, wherever you go. Why not? Should we? Uh, this really only works at smaller sizes and speeds like we're running at. So the minute you start speeding it up, it gets really funky. It's also really difficult to build well because you end up with a very thin trailing edge on it like that. I don't want to tell you how many there are of these ribs in here that have broken ones on the end of them under the sheeting. But we had to get those all cut out professionally by, uh, by laser cutter because there was no way we were going to cut those up by hand. Do you guys use a motor for the plane? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was wondering what is the wing made out of it? Because it looks, I mean, it looks like metal. And then he kind of yeah. pulled it out pretty easily. So what's that made out of? This is actually, we know what all the materials are. There's a balsa in here. There's plywood, which is a cool guy. Those end ones are plywood. These ends, and then most of these um, like bars or whatever, these bars in here are plywood. Sorry, also. And then we have this little piece of foam in the front. Yeah. And then also <laughs> these guys who run the length here are basswood. Oh, yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. so theoretically these are designed to support, I think in worst case scenario, an 80 pound plane. We were trying to cut weight from last year. Our wings, like you said, were two pounds each, but these are one inch. These will be one. Yeah. Yeah. These will be. Uh, they'll probably end up being a little bit more than that, just because of blue and everything else. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why we can't take it. <laughs> but so uh, these ones are being a little more in house. Our big, our rear wings are a little bit longer, cord wise, and those will be probably closer to two pounds. There we go. And there's a nice cutaway kind of showing how the slot you're talking about are positioned. And also how our slightly different control surfaces are positioned on these. Because we're not just doing a regular cut out of the wing for the control surface. We've actually mounted them slightly off board, <coughs> which is what these rails are here for. <coughs> And there's just kind of our justification for why we did that. There we go. So there's a justification for why we made that change. More about that.